Number 1. Spionid worms. Spionid worms are a sedentary, polycute worm that builds tubes in the sand or rock using a mucus it produces. They are characterized by having two white, clear palps that stick out from the surface of the tube to capture food particles. They will consume drifting fish food, plankton, and suspended detritus. I haven't had any issues with these worms. However, some reefers have found that their feeding palps can irritate nearby corals. Removal methods include gluing the top of their tube or biological control with certain worm-eating wrasses. Number 2. Flatworms. There are a few types of flatworms that can be found in our reefs. The one pictured above is a ghost flatworm, which is neutral and will not benefit or harm anything aside from eating copepods. Others tend to be a lot more negative, such as pumpkin flatworms that grow on coral and block light, polyclad flatworms that eat snails and clams, and acropora eating flatworms that can completely decimate acropora coral by eating their tissues. Some methods for removal include bear dips, biological control with worm eating predators, and products such as flatworm RX by Blue Life or flatworm exit by Sally Fruit, both of which are reef safe. Most concerns are regarding the harmful chemicals that flatworms release when they die, as well as nutrient spikes, so removal of dead worms as well as a water change is recommended after treatment. Number 3. Unidentified polychaete subclass Arantia. This worm seems to be more on the rare side of the hobby, as I only found one forum with a similar worm to this and no identification. Using the integrated taxonomic information system, it could possibly be in the order Philodocida. However, I would gladly take feedback from someone with more expertise in the field. It is characterized with a white head, skinny segmented body, notable CT, and a lack of tentacular cirri, unlike that of Dorvalidae worms. For me, they have not bothered anything in the tank, however they seem to prefer meteor foods and some reefers have found them stealing food from coral. Number 4. Feather Duster Worms Feather Duster Worms are harmless filter feeders that capture food using their crown with radials. They are completely sessile and live in tubes. Most of the hitchhiking feather dusters stay small and form calcareous tubes. Many reefers will keep larger, colorful, ornamental feather dusters that feed on live phytoplankton. Number 5. Bivalves. Bivalves are a class of mollusks that are characterized with two lateral shells, being primarily sessile, and are filter feeders that consume suspended zooplankton, phytoplankton, and other organic particulate depending on species. The one pictured above is an unidentified species and feeds on phytoplankton. They are harmless and tend to close their shell if threatened. They may also move location very slowly if they dislike where they are placed, and some coral may grow on their shells. If insufficient amounts of food are not provided, most of the time they end up dying over time. Number 6. Limpets. Limpets are in class Gastropoda and are a group of aquatic snails characterized with a shell shaped as a cone. They also have a strong muscular foot which makes them difficult to remove. Those that hitchhike on live rock tend to be small and sometimes beneficial by eating algae. However, there are a few that have been found to eat SPS coral tissue. Keyhole limpets that have a hole at the top of their cone shell are more likely, but if you are unsure which type you have, it's best to just remove them. Number 7. Tenaticea. Tenaticea are in the class Malacostraca, similar to isopods. They have a slightly longer body and may be seen on the front glass of aquariums. They are reef safe and usually eat leftover fish food and possibly copepods. Number 8. Foraminifera. Forums are neither plants or animals, rather they are taxonomically placed in kingdom protozoa. Certain protists, like forums, tend to act similar to animals. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors, and sizes. However, those found in our reef tanks tend to be small, pinkish-orange in color with a branching shape, to clear and spiny. They are harmless and consume bacteria and microalgae. I wanted to include clips of decaying red macroalgae because they may look similar and can be confused for them since they may both be branching or orange. Number 9. Sundial Snail Sundial snails are characterized with having an alternating black and white pattern. They stay relatively small, but some may get noticeably large. The reason they are harmful is because they will eat zoanthids and can completely decimate zoanthid colonies. If you find the snail hitchhiking on a zoophrag, it's most likely a sundial snail and should be removed. 
Using Coral RX Dip is a great method for removal before adding to the tank. Number 10. Tunicates. Although they may resemble sea sponges, tunicates are our closest invertebrate relative since they are part of phylum chordata. Vertebrates such as humans are also part of phylum chordata, and we both share chordate synapomorphies. In our reef tanks, the adult stage is completely sessile and filter feed on microplankton, making them completely harmless. Unfortunately, most don't last very long in our tanks due to insufficient amounts of their specific food source.